Hello to everyone. My name is Cristina Poggi. I've been a breastfed yoga fan for more than 20 years. I've been dealing with training and education for 11 years, mostly here in Tuscany, Italy, where I live. This lesson is one of a series in which I talk about several topics uh, regarding digital mammography by providing lots of images and a few drawings too. Today, I'll talk about the artifacts correlated to the radiographer, targeting especially to improper stretching and flattening of the tissue acquired. And this is to say, we are going to talk about skin folds. We had already defined what an artifact is in the first video lesson as an alteration, which could be almost invisible or very important, of the final product, the image. After acquisition and reconstruction, it means that because of the artifact, the reproduction of the object is not entirely true. According to the definition by Dr. Bassett, an artifact is any variation of mammographic density not caused by true attenuation differences in the breast. These are the densities you can find in a mammographic image. The dense area, radiopaque, is fibroglandular tissue, and the non-dense area, radiolucent, made of fat. Mammography density is generally defined as the ratio between dense area and the total area of the breast imaged. We had already talked about radiographic anatomy in the first video. You can find the link at the end of this presentation if you like. Let's start with today's subject. Skin folds are the most common artifacts correlated to the radiographer's performance in mammography, but is also due to the dynamic range of digital mammography, which is so much wider than that of an analogic one. This is the reason why we could see folds that are very small and thin and even of very low density in digital mammography. A typical ring of certain artifacts, which is found exactly at the passage between upper outer quadrant and axillary It is due to a not effective stretching out of the tissue in this area, not always resolvable. On the contrary, these ones are due to a not proper positioning of the patient's arm and shoulder. According to the method of positioning I teach, to properly stretch skin folds in axillary tail and petrolaris maya, you should obtain full patient's upper limb relaxation, hand included, and shoulder still, perform a rotation of the arm upwards and outwards, then stretching it forwards and downwards with the elbow flexed. This fold is due to a fat pad not easily removed, not necessarily correlated to a high BMI. Here you can see a fan-shaped fold, radiolucent, not so influential, I would say, on the radiologist's performance. Let's move on to another very common skin fold in pectoralis myo muscle. Very interesting one here, which I called a trickle-like skin fold. You can find it only in patients with small breast and lean thorax, usually associated to a stiffening of the muscle. You could also understand it by the shape of it, the muscle I mean, oval, with a narrowing in the superior parts. Also here. This one is a typical skin fold due to a not effective stretching of the armpit tissues. Folds in pectoralis maya can be of different thickness, length and density. I called folds like these first two 3D folds because they can include tissue. You can find them usually in women with very lean thorax if they don't relax, a gap between the thorax and the detector is formed, and the compression leads to the creation of folds. This one is a 2D fold. This one is more important but almost completely radiolucent. Check if the glandular tissue is involved, like here. When it happens, the projection is usually to be repeated. 
a fold that extends from the pectoralis maior to the axillary tail, and also an inner pincer-like fold, commonly seen in this portion of the breast due to a not effective tissue stretching. Here you can see an artifact due to the wrong inclusion of the median central part of latissimus dorsi. This one in axillary tail, very common in this as well, is not a real fold, actually. But it could be mistaken for ectopic breast tissue, like this one. Ectopic or accessory breasts could be very different from the one in the typical location, as in these uh, other examples. This fold is due to an improper stretching and smoothing out of the deep lateral tissues. In these cases, we have to repeat because the fold involves glandular tissue and the correction should be done from behind and very carefully. You have to pay attention not to lose tissue. If the patient is very lean but the breast is big and very dense, in addition to an important 3G fold like that, you could also see another artifact shown here by the stars. I'll show it to you better. The artifact implies a loss of the skin edge. And it's easy to see when there is an important thickness and density gradient, how it happens in a very lean patient with a very dense breast or in a processes career. Here, there is a loss of inner tissue too. Same reason. It is a reconstruction artifact correlated to the dose delivered. Very long pleated skin fold here magnified due to improper stretching of deep lateral tissues. The compression itself leads to a kind of accordion effect. Same problem, less important, with a huge 3D fold, the both of them due to the wrong inclusion of the central part of latissimus dorsi, alongside the repeated projection with the correct portion of latissimus, there is still a fold but much smaller. This one is a fan-shaped artifact made of multiple skin folds correlated to a severe ptosis of the breast. They are very difficult to remove, usually found in women who have lost a lot of weight. Another very common skin fold in IMF, it can be more or less thick, long or dense. The vertical fold is the most common. It comes from the lateral aspect of the breast, which is the hidden part. You should smooth the tissues out carefully, vertically, backwards and downwards. The horizontal ones come from the medial aspect of the breast, the one which looks towards the radiographer, and it could be removed by firmly lifting the breast. The direction of the radiographer's hand moving out of the field shouldn't produce artifacts. As you can see in the first example, the posterior ligaments of Cooper appear somehow stretched medially. Same in the second example, associated with a fault in the positioning technique too. You see there is a breast deformation, and I'll talk about that in the next lesson. Skin folds in glandular tissue, in that case, the projection needs to be repeated, usually in any case, for any density or thickness. A fan-shaped uh, skin fold artifact, typical of the outer uh, quadrant, due to a not effective action of smoothing the tissues out, uh, you should work them gently away superior direction while the compression puddle goes down. Folds in the inner quadrant, usually correlated to a patient's specific anatomy of the cleavage and also due to the degree of ptosis. Actually, they are more difficult to remove than those in the outer quadrant. 
However, this portion is very important, so we should take extra care to the position of the contralateral breast and check if IMF is free from faults. The two artifacts usually occur together. We talked about pseudo-artifacts in the first lesson. In this case, it is not a pseudo-artifact. It is a real one, due to a not effective smoothing action in IMF. Very interesting, this last example here. You can see a thick, radiolucent line. It is air trapped in this portion, which, even if it's not clearly visible, extends through the entire, almost the entire breast. Regarding corrections, they are strongly dependent from the patient's anatomy. We ask the patient to hold her breast out of the way, outwards, of course, upwards or downwards, we choose the best solution to eliminate the faults. Regarding IMF, we have to smooth out the tissue vertically, downwards. We could ask the patient to move her hips backwards. It is very effective, but you risk to lose deep inferior tissue, so pay close attention to that. Okay, here you can find some interesting uh, papers. This is the link to the first lesson should you be interested in. Thanks for your attention. Next lesson is about mistakes in positioning for extension and rotation of the tissue acquired. For the CC projections, lots of things to say about it. As usual, this is my mail for questions and suggestions. Hope you have enjoyed. I await you all for the next lesson. Bye!